providers. God is here. God is my healer. God is just in everything that he does. God is sovereign. God is my joy. God is so faithful. God is good. God is constant. God is a finisher. God is free. God is steadfast love. God is better. God is hope. Next, we have Brian Warning, and uh, Brian and his wife Margie, they lead the Yucatan mission trip that we do every year, and this year I had the privilege to, to go on that trip with them, and uh, honestly, Brian, like, one thing that I noticed about you is, like, you, you are an evangelist. You just have, like, this hunger for the lost, and for me to describe, like, what I learned about you on that trip is that you just want to be his hands and your feet and his feet. And so uh, I'm excited for you to share what God's placed on your heart today. Hey, church, can you help me welcome up Brian Warning? Thanks, Cub. So um, I just want to thank you guys for letting me share today. I want to just share a little bit about how God's been working in my heart. And hopefully it'll just inspire you guys a little bit too. So God is here. Let's, let's let that sink in for just a second. Now I want to have you guys kind of join in with, with me here. So God is here. All right, over here, God is here. Awesome, guys. So from the very beginning, God created us. He created the earth, and he created everything in us. I mean, what an amazing God. So he's always been here, right, from the very beginning. But he, is a, he did give us this thing called free will. So those of you who don't know, free will is he let us choose whether we let him in our hearts or not. So my question for you guys today is, are you letting him in your heart? Are you listening to what he's giving you guys? So Revelation 3.20 says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and you open the door, I will come in and share a meal with you as friends. That's a pretty awesome scripture when you really think it. There's a lot packed into that one scripture. Um, a lot of people think that scripture is referring to Jesus talking to non-believers, and he's knocking on their door, asking them into his, their heart. But the truth is, John wrote that to the church of, bear with me here, Laodicea. I don't know if I got that right. but um, And that church had gotten very comfortable. They were, uh, they were into worldly things. They were worried about money, security, and lots of temporary type things. I don't know about you guys, but that kind of sets home with me too. And my family and I, we, we struggle. We get comfortable with worldly things and worry about those kind of things and sometimes lose sight of what we really need to do. But the cool thing is God is here. So I want to break this scripture down into four applicable parts. Look, listen, open, and then follow. So first, look. Look for Jesus, guys. He's here. Like, we've already established that. So just look around. Look at his creation. Look in the mirror. He created you. Um, and then listen, listen for that knock, because he's knocking, he's knocking on your heart. He's knocking on your door, so I just ask you guys to do that. Um, thirdly, you should open, open that door when you hear the knock. What, how's he knocking on your heart? Just open the door, sit down, and receive what he's telling you. And then finally, follow. Follow those promptings of what he's telling you, like, if you miss that part, you're missing out on a lot. So um, one of the things that I like about that last part of that verse, I just imagine for a second that you've done this. You've gone through these steps. And now you've got Jesus sitting at the table with you at your house. I mean, imagine your best coach, your best mentor. Now take it times a thousand. Jesus is sitting there talking to you. He's telling you what he has for your life. I mean, you're just like, let's go. It's like serve day. One, two, three, let's go, right? You're like, let's jacked up. I just, I just love that analogy. So um, then the other thing I wanted to add about that too, like it kind of correlates with like the last few weeks, Pastor Marty's been talking about relationships and how do we share a story and share a meal even. And um, just remember the most personal, or the most important relationship is that personal intimate relationship with Jesus. So I just talked about a pretty practical scripture. I don't know how that's actually going to apply to you guys, but I just follow with me here for a minute. So hopefully you'll be able to look, listen, open, and follow. Now, you guys might be thinking, why did he bring this safe up here? Is that part of his story? Is God in the safe? 
Uh, he is here, but he's not in the safe. But um, I just wanted to, uh, that safe has an important part in my walk and how I started really listening to the knock that Jesus had on my life. So I'll take you guys back to 11 years ago. And Clayton, a mission trip leader in a church we were going to, he called and he asked me and Margie if we would go on a trip. There was a knock. My answer was, oh, our kids are little and we don't, you know, we don't have, we got lots of excuses. We're not going to go because we're thinking about us. Then he called again. We said no. He called a third time. We said no. We weren't hearing the knock. And I, I can remember the moment just like it was yesterday. Margie and I were sitting on the couch watching TV. Clayton calls. There's the knock again. This time he says, hey, Brian, somebody from the church is wanting to sponsor you guys. You only need to come up with $1,000 to go on the trip. Money was one of the issues for us at that time. And I said, okay, Clayton, let me talk to Margie about it, and I'll get back to you. I hung up the phone, and I was like, I knew my plan. It was going to be a hard no. I talked to Margie. <laughs> I'm kind of stubborn that way. I don't know about any other wives. Do you have stubborn husbands? But um, as... As Margie and I are talking, she said, are our passports even valid like right now? Are they, have they expired? And I said, well, I'll go look. They're in the safe that we keep under our bed. So I went, got the safe. And right, right on top of the safe, on the very top, was this envelope. It wasn't actually this when I recreated it. But it says, <laughs> it says Disney Fund. That was a Dave Ramsey thing. Um, We'd already gone to Disney. I forgot the envelope was in the safe. Um, I'm here to say I only had to go to Disney one time, so that's, you know, for some people like it. It wasn't my thing. But <laughs> guess what was in this envelope, guys? Yeah, exactly. This time I heard that knock. Margie and I had no choice but to, to respond and go. And I'm so glad we did. So that just set the tone. I'll try to fast forward here a few years later. We heard that knock again, and God said, take your kids on a trip. So we loaded them up and we took them to the Dominican Republic and went on a trip. On that trip, it was so impactful to our family. We heard God say, you need to make this a commitment. You need to go at least every other year. So that's what we made that commitment to do. Then we ended up in Mexico with our family in two years. Then we had COVID hit. That kind of made it a two or three year kind of, or an extra year gap. And then God told us, you need to try to lead a trip, not just lead your kids. So for three years, we've taken the bridge trip to, on the Yucatan trip. And so it's just been a gradual pro progression, and it's been nice to listen to what God's telling us. So I want to take you guys to that last trip to the Yucatan that we just did in June, and I want to set you up here. So I'm going to go back to another knock. We were only going to have one preaching opportunity. Pastor Cub was going, and I said, Pastor Cub, would you preach? And he said, why don't you do it, Brian? Uh, so, so this is my second appearance. Um, so picture a Sunday evening service, and we had an altar call at the end. And an altar call is where you ask people to come up for prayer, similar to our prayer stations. And people just either give their lives to Jesus, or they rededicate themselves, or they just come up with, you know, any problems that they have. So we had, we had this altar call, and it was just an amazing experience. There was people coming up and just there were and we have people praying in English and, and people listening and I mean God just spoke to everybody it was just it was an amazing time um, and it was 30 40 minutes in and I was like all right how do we how do we wrap this up I'm trying to I've never done this and and all of a sudden one of our team members April comes coming right up to me and I can I just I remember that look in her face and she said God's telling me that we're not done with this someone needs prayer so April heard that knock. Somebody was probably in that congregation that was not, they were trying, but they just didn't have the courage to come up. So I asked if there was, or the interpreter asked if there was anybody else that needed prayer. And this little Mayan man came straight to the front. I mean, it was, it was awesome. April's praying with him. And at that moment, I was like, this is Pastor Santiago, our mission partner's father-in-law. Guys, our church has been praying for this man for two years for his salvation because he was lost. Here he is. April's praying over him. 
she didn't know that part, so I stepped in after she was kind of done, and um, can you pull the picture up? So this is that moment, and it was just like so awesome. So I was able to share how you, like how we can take that salvation, that free gift that God gave us, share it with him, and then as, as we were going, Pastor Santiago led his, hu- uh, his, hu- his husband, he led his, that's not, no, um, <laughs> He led his father-in-law to the Lord right there, and just a great moment. So I'm going to pick on Mike now, too. Did you guys notice his shirt? (laughs) Um, We did not plan that, but Mike's an easy target sometimes, so we like, Jess and I got him both here. So, Um, But God wants to work in your guys' lives, too. He's an amazing, amazing father. So my, my challenge to you guys is just listen to what... God's telling you, like, listen for the knock and then let him into your heart and don't stop there. Cause if April had stopped there and just listened and didn't follow that prompting, we wouldn't have had that moment. So follow through with it, guys. God wants to work in your life. So my, my encouragement is to just really listen to what he says. Um, get together with other people, talk, pray, like just do life together guys. And, uh, and I'll leave it at this. If you guys will challenge yourselves to get uncomfortable, I mean really get uncomfortable, that's when God really takes over and he does amazing things. So thanks for sharing, or let me share today, guys. God is here.